Come on. Can we give him a big pr- a hand of praise today? Amen. Amen. I'm grateful for Jesus. Amen. Amen. We, we, uh, we know that he, he can handle the problem of sin. And other people say, well, you know, I'm addicted to it. I'm struggling with it. Uh, let me tell you, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. God can help you with that. Amen. And I believe that he can help anyone recover. Amen. Let me give you the second message today, and I'm excited to preach this one, all right? It's not really part what we think of as the Christmas message, but I see it as part of the angelic message, all right? The second point is this, that Jesus Christ will reign as king forever. Jesus Christ is going to reign for king as ever. When we think of Christmas, you know what we think of? Sweet little baby Jesus in a manger. We think of the softness of Mary's face and the wonderful opening, you know, gentle heart of, of, of Joseph taking them in. And, and we think of that there was no room for them in the inn and all of that. But how many of you realize that from an angel's perspective, they knew who Jesus was? Amen? They saw him as the pre existent, eternal son of the living God. They knew that, that, that creatures in the galaxy, creatures in the universe, bowed down to him and now that they saw him as a baby you know appearing in flesh as a little baby they realized that he was going to become something great he was going to become a king in fact the christmas story is filled with kings magi from the east some say they were kings saw that from the east saw his star came to worship him even the stars declared that a king had been born herod the king was so intimidated that he tried to have him killed baby jesus killed we can never forget that the message of the angel was that jesus christ would reign as eternal king and how incredible that the angel entrusted this to a young teenage girl by the name of Mary. Let me read the story. Luke chapter 1. It says this, In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus, and he will be great. How many of you think Jesus is great? Come on. I think we ought to just give him a big round of applause. Don't you? He's so great. We can't hardly say his name without worshiping him. Amen. He's going to be great. And he will be called the Son of the Most High. And notice the next words. It says, The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. In. I want to declare to you this morning that Jesus was king, he is king, and he will always be king. In fact, I want to just let you know who he is. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Come on. He proved that by bruising Satan's head. He, did, he became king by defeating death, hell, and the grave. He proved that he was who he said he was by conquering temptation, sin, and shame. Well, some would say, well, if the proclamation of the angel is that Jesus is king, you know, I I don't see where his throne is. You know, where, where is he reigning? Let me tell you something. He reigns, all right? He's king over the universe, okay? His throne is not set on this earth. One day it will be set on this earth. We know we watch the news and we see Donald Trump sitting in the Oval Office, we could say reigning, okay? We see the prime ministers and the, and the emperors going to important meetings. And I'm sure somewhere on the earth there's somebody who still sits on a throne. But I want to tell you something. There are none of those thrones that compare to the kingly, heavenly throne of Jesus. Let me read about it to you today from the book of Ephesians. It says, the pow- that power is the same as his mighty strength 
he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. And notice where it says that Jesus is sitting. And seated him at his right hand. That means at the right hand of God, he is seated. Come on. In the heavenly realms. And notice where his throne is. Come on. Is his throne beneath the thrones of this earth? Uh Uh-uh. Is it a little bit above the thrones of this earth? Uh Uh-uh. The scripture says, Far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in this present age. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is king in this present age. Come on. Right now, Jesus is king. Not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. Come on. And not only is his throne far above all power and authority and dominion, but I've got news for you. His name is the highest name in the universe. And every single knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Lord to the glory of God the Father. Come on. You say well who's he reigning over? He's reigning over those who are willing to subject themselves to his reign in this very moment. Come on. Is there anybody in this house that says I will gladly bow now. I will gladly worship now. I will gladly submit to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords now because I know who he is and I know that he is God and I know that he's going to reign forever In fact, the scripture tells us this, that you and I are part of a heavenly kingdom. Do I got anybody that says, oh yeah, I'm a citizen of the grand old USA, but my real citizenship is in the heavenlies. Come on, somebody. Amen. Either you're in one kingdom or the other. Either you're in the kingdom of darkness or you're in the kingdom of heaven. Is there anybody that says, I'm so grateful that God translated me out of the kingdom of darkness and put me in the kingdom of His dear Son? Oh, I love the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. And part of the Christmas message was that the angels delivered to us, not that just He was a baby in a manger, but that He's going to be the King of kings. You can read over in Revelation chapter 19 that one day this same Jesus, born in a manger, looked on by angels who died on the cross. This very Jesus is going to get himself up on a white horse. And he's going to return to earth for a second time. He's going to be followed by the armies of heaven dressed in white. And he's coming to set up his kingdom on earth where he will rule and reign with the saints of God. He, we will reign with him for 1,000 years. Is there anybody looking forward to being in the reign of Jesus? Come on. First time Jesus came, he came veiled in the form of a child, not many really knew it. The world really didn't take much notice. Some did, but most did not. The second time he comes, the next time he comes, and hopefully that's going to be really soon, he's going He will come unveiled. He comes without the robe of human flesh in terms of an infant. And when he comes, it will be abundantly clear and immediately clear to all the world exactly who he is. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He is the conqueror of death, hell, and the grave. He is Jesus, Savior of mankind. He's the Lord of creation. And he's the sovereign Lord of of all. Come on. Can you give Jesus a big hand today? The first time he came, a star marked his arrival. The next time he comes, my friend, the whole of heaven will roll up like a scroll and the stars will fall out of the sky. The first time he came, wise men and shepherds brought him gifts. The next time he comes, the scripture says he'll bring gifts and rewards for his own. Come on. The first time he came, there was no room for him in the end. The next time he comes, the whole world won't be able to contain his glory. The first time he came, he was attended by a few shepherds and some wise men but the next time he comes the scripture says that every single eye is going to behold him even those who pierced him come on the first time he came as a baby the second time he came he will come as sovereign king and lord the first time he came he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger but the second time he comes his clothing is going to look as if it was a vesture dipped in blood come on 
The first time he came, the angels had to announce his arrival. The second time he comes, it'll be plain who he is because on his robe and on his thigh are written these words, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Come on, somebody. The first time he came, he had to experience shame. But when he comes again, he's going to come in splendor. First time he came, he was despised and rejected by men. And when he comes again, every knee's going to bow before him. Come on. The first time he came, he stood before Pilate. And when he comes again, he's coming to judge the earth and men will kneel before him. The first time he came, he was spat upon. But when he comes again, crowns will be laid at his feet. The first time he came as a carpenter, the next time he comes, he comes as a conquering warrior who will destroy all of his enemies by the sword that comes out of his mouth. Come on. The first time he came, he came to a tree. The second time he comes, he's coming to a throne. The first time he came to a crucifixion, but the second time he's coming, he's coming to a coronation. Come on, somebody. The first time he came as a servant, but the next time he comes, he's reigning as the sovereign Lord of all the universe. I'm not talking about some other Jesus. I'm talking about the very Jesus that walked into your life, forgave you of your sins, lifted you up out of the miry clay. That very Jesus is the one I'm preaching about today. That baby born in a manger, seen by angels, is the king who will reign forever. He'll reign for a thousand years. And then at the end of those thousand years, the scripture says that God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth and there'll be an eternal king. Come on, by the name of Jesus, in an eternal city built for square, in a city where the lamb is the light. Oh, just let me preach this morning I might get to preaching oh hallelujah I don't know about you you say I, I get excited about the birth of Jesus I'm sorry I love Christmas come on you want to know why because my king was born on Christmas amen someone said well was Jesus born on December 25th I don't know you know something though if my family says you know, we can't make it to your birthday, and they celebrate it a couple weeks late. It doesn't bother me a bit. Hello? How I many you know we may not be celebrating it on the right day? I don't think that bothers the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. Someone shout out happy birthday. Amen. Are you grateful for Jesus this morning? Amen. And I love the fact that one day in the future, and I don't think it's very far away, we get a little glimpse of another angel that's going to bring a specific message. Revelation 11 and verse 15. And I love this verse where the angel cries out, The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, and He will reign forever and ever.